Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. Or good afternoon, it's just <laughs> an afternoon. <coughs> One thought I would give you that. Lovely to see you all here, and there are any visitors, you're welcome. Sometimes I scan down and realize afterwards there are visitors, so if there are, you're very, very welcome. I uh, just want to underline some, a few of the announcements. Um, just to say that a little leaflet here, some of you may have got it coming in, you may have picked it up last week. There's more copies on the desk, but um, if you happen to come in late, it's God's work on our hands. Just a reminder of the outreach. Um, those involved from here, um, but one individual also from our sister congregation in Cross Gower, and then highlights William and um, William Montgomery and Sharon down in Fermoy as well. So it allows you to know when people are away so that you can pray. Um, we'll mention it later. Roberto's already away at camp. Um, Daniel's already away with SISM. And then, in coming week, um, Johnny Bears will go um, and turn and read next Sunday. So, please, if you haven't got one, there's a few more copies there uh, just to guide your praying. <coughs> then, another important reminder is that we're July next week. As you will know, we're July tomorrow, but the time changes. In July for our services so uh, it'll be 11:30. and when I stand up it really will be good morning next week so 11:30 next week so um, I just want to read one thing just so that you are clear and emphasize it to you finance for church project uh, the church running project is progressing quickly and therefore the balance owed to the contractor will be due in the coming week so we mean that literally uh, we anticipate reclaim that will assist, but that is not available currently, and also unavailable is an investment which will mature at the end of November. This investment will realise 5,000 interest. It runs at full term, and to ask for capital, of course, any sooner will forgo that interest, all of it. We have sought funding also from two sources, uh, one which briefly granted funds in phase one, and this may, I emphasize, may come to fruition, but it's neither certain and not currently available. So the committee have discussed this at meetings. The requests are twofold, um, and this is for committee and for the wider congregation. We would seek a possible short-term interest-free loan, loan or loans to the value of 100,000 before the end of July, the amount to be repaid to contributor or contributors on maturity of our investment at the beginning of December. That will allow the interest on the investment to be claimed in full. Also, to deal with the need for money urgently, it would be beneficial to have pledges of one year interest free loans uh, before the end of August. I appreciate, as a consequence of the previous appeal, some individuals have already offered to lend money in this basis, interest free, and we are well on the way to the target required. But if you feel you can contribute, I want to speak in confidence to Ian or if you want to speak to myself, Ian is uh, currently on holiday. The need, does this need not be a large amount and all offerings are valuable? As together we can achieve all that. And can I emphasize we appreciate not every person is in a position to lend money and many are already giving generously to the monthly property appeal. For every support, we are very grateful. So that's just to highlight that to you. Please note also, under um, the summer camps, the details for various children's clubs. And next Sunday, as well as the morning service, there is a district orange service here in the evening. Ladies' walks, you will notice, not tomorrow night, but tomorrow night week is the next one. So today we continue to look at the I wills of Jesus, the I will of comfort taken from John's Gospel and chapter 14. But we're reminded by Paul that God is the God of comfort. Let me read what we find Paul writing to the believers in Corinth. Our verse, verse is for the week. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. For we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ, we share abundantly in comfort too. Let's pray as we seek God's blessing. Father, we thank you that we come to a loving, gracious God, a God of comfort. We pray, Lord, that you would encourage us and strengthen us as we meet together today. May we sense the presence of the risen Saviour among us. And may you speak into all our lives. 
We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, our opening phrase is words we're familiar with from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength and straits a present aid. Sang together, reminding us of the powerful and comforting words found in Psalm 46 that you are our refuge and our strength, an ever present help in the day of trouble. And Lord, we know in this life we face many difficulties and problems, and at times we feel shaken, and yet you are the solid foundation. If we build our lives upon you, we can stand in any storm. We thank you that you have promised your presence. We thank you that you have promised your peace, that peace that passes all understanding. And that, Lord, you will be with us to strengthen us and to guide us and direct us. And our prayer is simply that each one of us will have a heart that is submissive and is teachable and ready and willing to be guided by you. We come to praise you. We come to lift high your name. And, Lord, we think of the words of that lovely hymn, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Who his feet thy tribute bring, ransom healed, restored, forgiven. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you as those who've been ransomed because Jesus has paid for our sin as he suffered and died on the cross. We thank you indeed that we have been rescued, we have been bought with the price of Jesus' blood. Ransomed, healed, and restored. We thank you that spiritually you have brought healing. And you've restored that fractured relationship, that relationship that was fractured because of the sin of our first parents. We thank you that we can enjoy reconciliation with you, a holy God, because of what Jesus has done. And so we come in and through the name of Jesus Christ to you, the one who is the only mediator between God and man. And we thank you that we can offer you our worship. We thank you that we can read together your word and be challenged and encouraged and comforted by it. And we pray, Lord, that each one of us will sense your presence today. We thank you for each head bowed before you. And Lord, we pray your rich blessing upon each one. And may we sense the presence of the risen Savior among us to guide us and to lead us. And we thank that your Holy Spirit is one who guides us into all truth. Lord, may we know his work in our hearts today. And may you bless our time together. May we leave this place refreshed and renewed in our hearts and spirits and rejoicing at having met again with the living, exalted Christ. Lord, we pray that Christ will be 
real to us and we pray that he will reign in all our hearts and help us indeed to exhibit the fruits of your spirit day by day and for those of us who know you lord our prayer is simply that in our lives in our attitudes in our speech we may increase and become more christ-like and lord that is our desire that is our prayer so lord we commit ourselves to you in humble surrender and we pray these things in the precious name of jesus our lord and savior and friend amen <clears throat> If you want to turn the Pew Bible, we're going to read very familiar words from John's Gospel, page 1082. 1082. It's a familiar passage, but at times we need to remind ourselves of the wonders of God's Word and the blessing even in the very familiar verses. John chapter 14 from verse 1, this is God's word. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? <coughs> Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe in me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him and he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father. And you are in me. And I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them. He is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to him then Judas not Judas Iscariot said but Lord why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world Jesus replied if anyone loves me he will obey my teaching my father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him he who does not love me will not obey my teaching these words you hear are not my own they belong to the father who sent me all this I have spoken while still with you, but the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will stand in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Neither do not be afraid. Amen. We thank God for his word. <coughs> Okay, it's lovely to see boys and girls. I'll come out a little closer to you. Most of you are near the front. If you just want to sit along the front pews, that's fine. Okay, I'm just going to stop from further Thank you. 
Okay, that's great. Right. What am I? What am I going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I should know. Right. I'm very short, very simple. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. And whether you're in Spain or Northern Ireland, what's that? Sheep. Sheep and. Lamb. Yeah, sheep and a lamb. Whether you're in Northern Ireland or Madrid or wherever, so a sheep and a lamb. Okay, and the lamb's out in the field. Good place for it. Okay. This is another picture of a lamb. So, where is it? <laughs> Where's the lamb? Huh? In the oven. Right, that's an aga cooker. <laughs> that's an aga. Some of you maybe have agas, country homes, city homes, around aga. And the aga, okay. So the lamb's in there, and it's wrapped up. So, an idea why it's in there? Sheep farmers here, yeah. Why would you put it in there? Why would you wrap it? Well, to keep it, to keep it warm. Yeah, to keep it warm. So there's one lamb in the field with his mum. What do you call the mum of the of the lamb? Sheep. Sheep. Female sheep. What's the female sheep called? Huh? You know, don't you? What's the female sheep? It's a you, isn't it? Or if you're from Samana, a guy. <laughs> Yeah, or you. What is it right here? Just put it. You or Gary? Yeah. Well, both. Right. So it's got its mom there. Its mom's looking after it, which is great. You think this other one has a mom that's an agar cooker? No. And the rest of the reason is in there. Okay. So sometimes farmers and <coughs> sometimes farmers the sheep, and something happens. Mom, the sheep to you. And it might have other lambs and not enough milk to look after that lamb, or it might unfortunately die, or something will happen that they can't look after it. So if mum can't look after it, then the farmer has to. So the farmer might have to take it in, and quite often you will see these lambs taken in to the home, and it might just be put in that instance, it's in the agar there, and it's in there for warmth. I always remember a relative, many, many years ago when I was young, that's a wee while ago now, but many years ago, I went to visit an uncle and aunt, and then they had a wee Jack Russell, and he always stayed in there in the agate cooker, and it was warm, the bottom door was open, and that's where he stayed nearly all the time, he loved the heat. Okay, so it's in there, because it has to be kept warm, it has to be looked after. Is there anything else you think the farmer would have to do for the little lamb if its mummy wasn't around to look after? It would need food, what else would it need? Food. Food. So it would be fed by the bottles, wouldn't it? It'd have to be bottle fed and looked after. Okay, what do you call those lambs? What do you think they're referred to as? Those lambs that have no mum, that are taken in, that are cured by the farmer or farmer's family. What do we call them? Hmm? Pet lambs. Yep, we often refer to them as pet lambs because they are being cared for by the owner. But another name, another type that is sometimes given is this, orphan lamb. Okay, so pet is usually what we hear. Farmers will talk about it, so many pet lambs, but sometimes you'll hear the phrase there, orphan lambs. And that means they have lost their mum for some reason, and they were looked after by the farmer. <coughs> In the reading, we heard the word orphan. Okay, uh, here it is. It's Jesus speaking. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And Jesus was speaking to the disciples in the upper room. He told them that he was going away permanently. He wasn't coming back. They were going to be left. But he said, I will not leave you as orphans because he said, I will send another helper, another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would come to them and he would <coughs> live in their hearts. And you see, this is Jesus who knew the eleven were sad, they were anxious, they were troubled. He had cared for them for those years that he was here. They had followed him, he was their teacher, their friend. Yeah. 
offering and doing it in the valley that the sun died. Father, we thank you for the offerings that have been given. Uh, we thank you for all that you give to us. And Lord, we recognize because of your faithfulness, we, Lord, we indeed only give a little to you of what you have given to us. So receive our gifts and use them for your glory and your honor, we pray. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm hoping that we're now going to open up our video. And this is William and Stars. Hi, greetings from Formoy and Care. We want to thank you for inviting us to share a little bit about the work here. And um, we're indebted to you uh, for all your prayers, support, and interest in the work down here in County Cork and County Tipperary. 
Uh, first, Sharon will give us some information about Vermoy. It's basically Bible Club Week as it's the main focus of the church at this time of the year. And then I'll share a few points regarding care. Good morning, everyone. Um, as William has said, I want to update you on what is happening uh, here amongst us in Fermoy. And uh, we are currently being blessed by God adding to our numbers. This is mainly happening due to people coming to Fermoy from abroad for work or study. And also a community of asylum seekers going through the process of applying for refugee status. So we're now working with quite a diverse group of people attending the church. This has brought a freshness to the fellowship as a number of them have a strong faith and are keen to serve God by being involved in the activities uh, we organise to share their faith and reach out with the gospel. An example of this uh, was just recently over the Easter period. We were blessed as we remembered Christ's death and celebrated his resurrection uh, with our brothers and sisters from around the globe by joining together as one body in Fermoy and care. These celebrations included communion on the Thursday evening, prayer on Friday, a meal on Saturday evening provided uh, and served by the youth and worship and celebration services on the Sunday morning and evening. And I just want to give you a little flavour of that celebration on the Sunday morning. Present in Fermoy, our focus is the Summer Bible Club, and we would love you to join with us in our Deep Sea Divers Adventures. The Club Week is running from Monday the 8th to Friday the 12th of July, so it's um, very soon. During the week, we will be diving deep with the children to explore who Jesus is. And we will be using a number of stories from the Gospel of Matthew to do that. So like other years on the Friday and the Saturday, the 5th and 6th of July, we'll be erecting the tents in the town park and creating a small village of tents for the event. And on Monday morning, we'll be receiving approximately 60 children. 55 have already registered online. We will come together as a large group for fun activities and the gospel will be presented to the children by one of our members. There will also be uh, small group times when the leaders will assist the children to study in a little mo bit more depth the message for that day and there will be uh, time for them to let off steam through ga organised games. Our aim is that in everything we do, we keep the message of Christ's death and resurrection and what it means for the children central to it all. As it's only a very short time away, there are industrious preparations being made. As divers, we need a submarine to dive in and the submarine needs water, so lots of props are being put together. There is also a lot of cutting out for the crafts that we do uh, with the children. And each time we meet, we end with prayer as without God's hand directing us, we labour in vain. This year, we have a team from Exodus in Lisburn coming to help us. The leader on the left is Austin McIntosh and the co-leader, second from the right, is Matthew. The other four young lads are in their teens and are seeking to serve God in this activity and deepen their faith in him. 
Pray for this team that God will bless them through us and that we will be blessed by them. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This verse has come to mean a lot for those in the church in care because it's very small numerically. It means a lot not just because the Lord has promised to be with us, but also reminds us that Jesus sees us as individuals and not just as a group of people. This small fellowship uh, meets every Tuesday morning for prayer. The meeting is quite remarkable in that it draws many believers who are visiting from uh, who are visiting the town and also attracts believers from other fellowships. The Care Church has been described as a spiritual watering hole. Uh, where believers come finding encouragement, support and love. Often this prayer meeting is the largest meeting of the week. Uh, then a number of them return again at 7.30 on the Tuesday night for the Bible study. The Bible study takes a form of open discussion where we look at the, the scriptures together seeing how it uh, should impact our lives uh, on a daily basis, not just as individuals but as a church fellowship. Then on Sunday evening uh, these evening service at 7 p.m. when uh, the faithful few turn up. Uh, again, there's a, real, there's a real sense of support and fellowship as we worship and share together. It's my privilege to be part of this small faithful fellowship who know the true value of meeting and encouraging one another in the faith. They also see the need of reaching out with the gospel. For example, uh, by running Christianity Explored and Alpha courses, reaching out through a pop-up library in Mitchellstown, and by doing street evangelism. Two of the flock were also involved in a rehabilitation centre for men with addictions. And as a church, we hope to facilitate some time out for the men who go to the, uh, to the uh, rehab centre, uh, organising afternoons and evenings, especially for those who have come to faith and a new life in Christ. Recently we were giving back the bungalow which CMI had for the Irish mission worker. The bungalow is in the largest housing area in Cairn. Uh, we hope to use this as a base to do evangelism in the neighbourhood and have house meetings. For example, at the end of July we plan to have a neighbourhood barbecue with games on the green for the children. Both Vermoy and Care has changed a lot over the past 14 years since we first arrived. There are many more migrants who have chosen Ireland for various reasons uh, and they have come from all sorts of social and religious backgrounds. Also the native Irish Catholic, notably among the younger generations, have become very secular in their thinking and behaviour. That said, we are blessed, especially in Vermoy, that the native Irish who have come to faith along with the migrants who are believers, that they have chosen for Moy uh, or, uh, and our church to be their spiritual home. The Lord is building his church, both in Formoy and Care, and now we'd like to share some prayer points with you. Thanks again for all uh, your prayerful support. Um, 
to what is happening. You got also a reference uh, in that video to the holiday club starting um, very soon. As I say, it is on your bulletin, so please be mindful of that. We're just going to take a couple of moments to pray for all the outreach that has started and that which is coming up. And uh, to remember, in the incoming week, we also have our general election, as we pray for wisdom for that. And indeed, also, very soon, we have some of our young folk who will be having graduation services, which is great for them, and we wish them God's blessing. Let's come to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for what we have heard from William and Sharon, how you are building your kingdom and blessing the churches in Vermoy and Perth. But we commit to you this special week and ask, Lord, that in all the preparations, uh, your blessing and your guidance will be very evident. We pray for the young people, uh, 60 odd children who are hoping to come. And we pray, Lord, for safety for them and for the helpers, and particularly for the team that will come down from Lisburn to assist. And most of all, as Sharon has said, we pray that the message of Jesus, the gospel, that is good news for all will be kept central. As we look forward to that, we pray for the outreach that has begun already with some of our members. Uh, the CF camp currently taking place in the Hazel School uh, over in Articlave, and pray for Roberta and the rest who will be involved, for Daniel and others who are ready at Fort Stewart Sism as it continues over the next two weeks. We pray for Johnny Mears as he would head to Romania uh, this week. The Lord be with him and his team. And we just ask for your rich blessing and your Holy Spirit who poured out upon them. And Lord, we just would indeed remember others who will go later in the summer also. And we pray that every effort will know your blessing and that Lord, lives will be transformed as they hear and respond to the good news of the gospel. We pray this week and coming week for the general election and ask Lord that your will might be done and that you will guide us and direct us as we would and go and as we would place our votes that lord we will seek your will and be obedient and submissive to you and we pray that those who are elected locally especially in westminster indeed would make wise decisions and be guided by you we pray especially for christians who are seeking election that lord there be those who have integrity and the clear christian faith who will be able to be involved at a high level and be able to influence decisions that will be made. We thank you also that in the coming days there are some of our young folk who will be uh, enjoying graduation ceremonies and we just pray for them and their families and rejoice with them and pray it will be a happy and an enjoyable time for them. And finally for ourselves as we turn to your word in a few moments, just open our hearts to your truth and we ask these things in Jesus' name. We're going to sing before we turn to God's word and as how firm a foundation is Jesus. <coughs> how firm a foundation you see of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word.
have all the written wisdom. Considering the high wills of Christ, and we want to look at one briefly today, and it can be labelled the high will of comfort. It's found in John 14 here, we're a very familiar passage. Jesus is addressing the 11 disciples before he goes to the cross, and he has gathered his chosen one for a moment of communication before he will be crucified and taken from them. And of course, we're reminded last week as we're thinking about Jesus calling the disciples that he had handpicked these men, and for three years he had taught them, he had trained them. They were convinced that Jesus was the Messiah, that they would reign with him in his kingdom. And Jesus knew and understood that his leaving would crush them and would confuse them. And to encourage them in this lovely chapter, issue several I will statements, promises, if you like, prefaced with the words I will. And the statement that we want to consider is verse 18, the I will of comfort. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And of course, someone has put it this way. At some point, we will all need to hear these words. They speak directly to our greatest fear and challenges, that of abandonment and isolation and loneliness and vulnerability. They remind us that we're not destined to walk this earth uh, without one who is with us. We do not stand alone. Briefly today, the I will of comfort. And three simple thoughts we will see in this passage, the perplexity experienced, experienced by the 11 disciples, Jesus' closest friends. And you see, Jesus is sharing about his imminent departure. They're confused, they're distressed, they're perplexed. Why? Well, primarily because they feel alone. And you should imagine how these disciples would feel when Jesus informs them that he would soon go to the cross. And then after that, he would be resurrected and ascend to heaven. He would leave them behind. And they must have wondered, what will life be without Jesus? What will it be like without him? How will we continue without the Master at our side, walking alongside us, guiding us, teaching us, instructing us, helping us? But of course, it was time for Jesus to go to the cross, and then after his resurrection, to ascend to the right hand of God, to be our great high priest. And it was natural for the disciples to be sorrowful. To them, it must have been seemed to like the end of a wonderful encounter with their Lord and Saviour, with the power of God. Living and walking with Jesus was more than they could have hoped for in this world. And with Jesus at their side, with Jesus there, their life had been filled with adventure, excitement, with joy, with victory, with power. They had witnessed firsthand miracles and healings. And so it's natural they would feel uncertain and insecure. That was normal for any human being. But note they had grown dependent upon Jesus, dependent upon the physical, visible presence of the Saviour. And that's something that you and I have never experienced, the personal, physical presence of the Saviour. They thought of the leaving of Jesus, that they would be abandoned, they would be forsaken, they felt alone. But then in response, we know that they offer objections to Jesus when he gives them this news. They offer objections. He makes the announcement that he will leave them and they can't cope with it. They can't take it in. As you read John's account, we see that Jesus, in these words that are so familiar, sought to give them a great deal of hope and a great many things to think about as he made this announcement. But it seems they were struggling to comprehend what he was saying, the departure of Jesus. Hence, the objections arise. First from Thomas, we're familiar and his words to Thomas, to Jesus were something like this. Lord, we aren't exactly clear on where you're going. Therefore, how could we possibly know how to get there? He's been labeled doubting Thomas, but he's summing up the doubt and insecurity of all of the disciples. And the reply of Jesus is unequivocal, decisive. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus, as he deals graciously, with Thomas in this question. And John MacArthur points out how much Jesus was thinking of them rather than himself. This is what he writes. Here is Jesus Christ, fully divine, but nevertheless totally human, anticipating the most horrible kind of experience, the cross, the humiliating and death on the cross, yet completely unconcerned at this point about his own experience and wholly absorbed in the needs of his 11 friends. But it seems that instead of setting the issue, 
the explanation of Jesus just led to another question. And this time it was Philip. And Philip, in not so many words, says, we don't know to whom you are going. And the second expression of agitation over Jesus' announcement is found there. And the objection to this, Thomas has had his turn now, it's Philip. And Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And apparently Philip is looking for a physical viewing of God the Father. Let me see, let us see him personally. And that will be all we need. We will never have another question again if we would only see the Father. That's what he is saying. Where's that effect? And maybe we have never said the exact words, but maybe we have said to God, if only you will do this one thing, I will never ever ask for anything else. If you will do this one thing, I will never doubt again. And that shows how frail and silly we can be. But in this case, Philip was asking something more serious. And maybe he was thinking of the time that Moses had asked God to show himself in Exodus 33. And God did let Moses see his glory, but he didn't let him see his face. Maybe he thought that since Jesus Christ knew God as his Father in such an intimate way, then, then God would let the Son show the Father to the disciples. But the response of Jesus is one that conveys sadness. Verse 9 to 11. Philip, do you really not truly believe? After all the miracles you have seen, after all that I have said about my equality with God the Father, do you really not understand? Do you not understand that to see me is to have seen the Father? Note the perplexity experienced by the disciples. But then conscious of the backdrop, note in verse 18, <coughs> secondly, the promise extended. Jesus, who is God, knows exactly what's in our hearts, knows what we think even before we speak of word. And he responds here, but he responds with grace and mercy and love. And he responds with a wonderful promise to them, found in verse 18. And what does he promise? Well, he promises an ever-present helper, an ever-present helper. Verse 15 following, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you, and he will be with you forever. Various versions interpreted it differently. Another helper, another comforter, another advocate. And Jesus knew that his disciples were struggling. They needed help to continue to do his work. And the thought of doing Jesus' work without his guidance, without his wisdom, was deeply troubling to the eleven. And so he promises another helper. The word is parakletos. Literally paraclete, means helper, comforter, advocate, one who comes alongside para, one who comes alongside paramedics, come alongside doctors, parallel lines, they come alongside other, one another. And Calio, the second part, means to call. So put together, the paraclete is someone who is called to come alongside another, like a trusted family attorney. And Jesus himself is called a paraclete or a comforter in 1 John 2 verse 1. And here he says, we will have another comforter sent from God. That is, of course, the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? Well, we see in verse 26, among other things, that he will lead us into all truth. He will bring to remembrance what the things that Jesus has taught. He is the spirit of truth. And his ministry is to reveal truth. It's a ministry of instruction, of teaching, a ministry of education. And he leads us into the truth of the gospel. In Jesus' time with the disciples, the disciples never seemed to fully understand what Jesus was teaching. They were bumbling along, stumbling along. They couldn't grasp what he was saying, but the Holy Spirit would now bring to the remembrance all that Jesus had taught. And that's important, because who wrote the New Testament? It was the disciples guided by the Holy Spirit who brought to their remembrance all that Jesus has said. He promises an ever-present helper, another comforter, and he promises a constant companion. Because the Holy Spirit was to be sent, he would be sent to take up permanent residence in the hearts of believers. In the Old Testament, it was very much the Spirit came only for special occasions, came and strengthened believers, but it wasn't a permanent presence. But Jesus here is talking about a permanent pre pre presence and he says, I will not leave you as orphans. Orphans were particularly vulnerable 
in that day and age. Of course, it referred to a child who had lost a father or mother, and that meaning is still prevalent today. But also the word that was used here was used in a broader sense in New Testament times. It spoke also not only of children who lost a parent or parents, but it spoke about students who were abandoned by their teacher. The teacher had either abandoned them or deserted them, had discarded them. And so that was the meaning also. But in both cases, whether it's referring to children abandoned by parents or students discarded by their teacher, it gives the picture of younger, less educated, less knowledgeable people facing being deserted by those they trusted, those they looked to for guidance, for help, and for leadership. And Jesus was a spiritual father to the eleven. He knew they were completely reliant upon him. They couldn't make it on their own. And that's why he said, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will not leave you. And Jesus' words could be translated to be expressed this way. I will not leave you behind like orphans who have been deserted by their parents, nor will I desert you like an unfaithful teacher who walks out on his students and leaves them with no supervision or help. Jesus says, I will be there through the person of the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you, he's speaking about coming in the person of the Holy Spirit. And no one, and as one who is a, an exact essence of himself, the Holy Spirit would be that perfect substitute uh, for the familiar presence of Jesus. Note the perplexity experienced, the promise extended, and simply and shortly, the peace evidenced. Our text in verse 18 and capitally is the message of the entire chapter. Not to be anxious, not to be troubled. That's how this chapter begins. Do not let your heart be troubled. And we ended in verse 27 with those words again. We're not to be troubled. We're not to be anxious. Why? Because Jesus will be with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. He will not abandon us and he will give us peace. And he says to the disciples, and to us that he will be there. The disciples will benefit from Jesus' peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. In that culture, when someone left another, they didn't say goodbye. They used the word shalom, peace. But Jesus is not merely repeating a normal goodbye. He's adding meaning, depth to it. And he reminds these 11 that he is still the Prince of Peace. And just because he is leaving them doesn't mean that he that will remove his peace. Jesus here tells the disciples, even though their world was about to be shattered, they can face it in the assurance that they have his peace to keep them going through the difficult times. The disciples will benefit from Jesus' peace. And the disciples will have the benefit of a supernatural peace. They will benefit from a supernatural peace. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, is what Jesus says. He speaks about a peace that is not found in this world, not found anywhere else. And Paul, writing to the Philippians, talks about a peace that's beyond or past all understanding. You see, events do not affect it. It's internal in our hearts. It's therefore not subject to any external pressure or circumstance. And circumstances may not have changed, but there's been imparted to the believer a consciousness that the one who indwells you is one who's able to handle every problem you have, the one who is sovereign over all, and you can know peace, a supernatural peace, because of that. Someone put it this way, Jesus had no inheritance or fortune to leave to his followers in this last will and testament, yet Jesus gave them two things greater than any fortune. First of all, he gave to them the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, and secondly, the peace of Jesus himself. And this is the peace of God the Son, with his complete trusting love in God the Father. You see, in their time of need, Jesus said to them, I will not abandon you as orphans. It's the I will of comfort. <coughs> it was there in the upper room for the eleven, it's there for us today. And when we don't understand what's happening, when everything seems to fall apart, we don't know the way, we can count on the Lord Jesus. God will not abandon you or me when we face tribulations. And even when there seems no hope, Jesus will never leave you. 
He will never abandon you. He will not forsake you as an orphan. And the amazing truth is we're not just watched over by God. We are inhabited by God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within the believer and he is that constant companion on our journey. And so if we feel abandoned, if we feel forgotten, let's remember the words of Jesus, that I will have comfort. I will not leave you as orphans. We are children of the Most High for believers, siblings of Christ, temples of the Holy Spirit. And may that assurance of his presence fill your heart with peace. May it embolden your faith. And may it remind you of the unfailing grace that holds you now through every trial, through every struggle, and holds you fast forevermore. Amen. Let's pray just for a moment before we sing. Father, we thank you for the words of Jesus, for the I will have comfort. And Lord, we recognize he spoke it to 11 disciples who were troubled and worried and anxious. But Lord, these words come with power to us today, to all our believers. I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. When we struggle and when we are in despair and turmoil, and let us remember that we have one who is faithful, one who watches over his children, and one who will never abandon us, the God of all comfort. Help us to rely upon him, to trust him, and to remember that he will hold us fast. His hold is strong. His hold is secure. Lord, may we take great comfort from this truth. As in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we close, we've been thinking of the verse, particularly, I will not leave you as orphans. And we're going to sing a modern phrase that really stresses this point. He will hold me fast. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me.
and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one this day and forevermore.